Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, you're very welcome to our leadership webinar this afternoon. It's great to see so much interest on an Easter bank holiday Thursday. So obviously, there's an appetite for this type of topic. So we're going to roughly uh, have the session for about 25 minutes, and we're going to allow five minutes for some Q&A. So all the questions come in anonymously. So if you have any questions about this or any kind of leadership topic, feel free uh, to ping me through a question, and I'll, of course, um, deal with it anonymously as well. So let's uh, commence with the slides. So leadership, this topic has been around for a very long time. Uh, it's been around from the nearly the 1800s, but leadership at the moment is very much evolving. This is down to things like the newer millennial generation, remote working, and loads of different types of things. So the main point here is it's evolving. We need to do something about it. We need to start looking at how we can be a better and different leader in 2018. So if you're an experienced leader looking at this session today, you could have been leading for maybe 10, 15 years in your organization. Perhaps it's time to review and adapt your style slightly to make sure you're getting the impact that you really need to get to from your leadership style. If you're a budding leader, and you don't, have to, you, know, you don't have to be in a formal leadership role to be considered a leader to start building your leadership repertoire either. So if you're a new leader or you're thinking you're going to move into a leadership role, that's fine as well. So you don't have to be in an existing leadership role to, to view this session today. Um, you're still leading, right? Even if you're not in a visible leadership role, even if you're not a leader in title, you are still leading. The moment you enter into the workplace, even as a graduate, you can still lead. And what I mean by this is you're leading with ideas. You're leading with thought leadership, creativity, and being a strong type of team player. That is leadership. So just because you don't have the title does not mean you're not leading. And most of the leaders I know in, throughout the workplace have actually started really working from the bottom up and you know, been very, very influential on thought leadership and being creative and being innovative and that's really got them where they need to go in terms of these kind of roles so you don't need to have the title to be a leader leaders are considered at all levels in the organization so not just your vps your senior directors your senior managers we are at all levels in the organization and we can have a authoritative power if we're leaders and we have the title but if you don't have that title yet you can have what we call referent power or information power because you're a subject matter expert or you know some, someone who's very very proficient in an area you're essentially leading as well if that's the case i love this uh, quote from robin sharma who is the author of the monk who sold his ferrari so if anyone's looking for a motivational book this is a really good one, and it's written very well, and it's all about how we look at uh, different things in life. Um, and leadership is not a title, it's a behavior, and we have to live it. Most of the people I've come across uh, through executive coaching sessions often come to me and say, oh, I'm, I'm VP of this area, or I'm a leader in this area, and I'm concerned that my people aren't following me. I'm concerned that people don't like me, and I'm concerned that people are leaving the organization because of my leadership style. And often I sit down and talk with them and go through kind of some self-awareness exercises about their style. And we often come back and say, um, you know, if you didn't have the title, would you still be acting the way you do? So it's really important that you focus on your behavior and how you treat people as a leader and not just your leadership title. So let's take a look at some current leadership trends that are out there now in, in 2018 and moving into 2019. So the first key thing is organizational redesigns now require a different type of leadership. So what's happening in organizations is we're having much flatter structures. Uh, we're having broader spans of control and much more decentralized authority. And what we mean here is that whole layers of management are actually being removed. This is due to a number of different things. Because a millennial generation is far more autonomous in the workplace, we're not needing that same oversight and same line of report that's required. Also for things like remote working, a lot of the time people now have arrangements where they're working from home one to two days a week. And as a result, you're not needing that same level of foresight in the organization. Also, there's a huge impact on trust here, that there's a lot more trust inside an organization that if we are working remotely, that we are doing the job. 
And there's less, less emphasis on this nine to five mentality. It's more about performances based on output rather than the hours that you're working. And this is due to commuting and all that kind of stuff that we're having issues with. So organizations are looking dramatically different. Um, just a little funny side by side, I saw somebody on LinkedIn this morning telling me that they have adopted a dog and their um, employers gave them paw paternity leave, P-A-W, like the paw. And that's how some organizations are reacting this, paw paternity leave. They got paid leave for two weeks to work from home to look after their puppy. And they uh, put a lot of information on this on LinkedIn and it got a lot of attention uh, about how, how cool their organization is for doing this. Now, I'm not saying that's going to work in every organization, but I thought it was pretty uh, cool how organizations have evolved. Um, the redesigns are different. We're looking at different types of organizations and leaders, as a result, have to look at doing leadership differently. A new type of team-focused leader is really required. So team-driven uh, organizations don't need leaders who solely focus on their own area anymore. Now, for people in the accountancy area, that's quite different because you might have a very specific uh, you know, niche area like tax or, or audit or things like that. But for people in more general leadership type of positions, we're now looking at kind of going beyond our own area. And we're looking for collaborative leaders with cross-functional knowledge. So there's going to be a lot more attention on uh, team-focused leaders rather than individual-based leaders in the future. Going back to millennials, I already mentioned it, but millennials need what we call intentional leadership development. So if you're a millennial and you're actually tuning in right now, uh, it's worthwhile to bear this in mind that many of millennials are already in management roles but feel there's a lack of career development and provision of skills they need to succeed as leaders. So, you know, there's obviously a difference between managers and, 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 and leaders, essentially. Managers are the doers, leaders are the thinkers behind how things go. So we are really needing to focus a lot more on leadership development for this millennial generation. This whole term of collective leadership is very much related to this. So collective leadership is a brand new form of leadership that matches the requirements posed by new working environments where adaptive challenges cannot be tackled by individuals but we need group leadership and collective leadership. So when problems come uh, to the organization, all of our leaders get together and brainstorm rather than the people that usually just look after that specific area. So once millennials secure these executive leadership positions, collective leadership styles are really going to flourish. So we need to be looking after this area now. And if you're not a millennial, we still need to be gearing towards more of this collective leadership and team-based leadership. The past is very much focused on individual leadership. So this whole thing of generational difference leadership is becoming a big thing at the moment. So there's going to be a major generational transformation taking place in the leadership sector, the arrival of millennials on the global scene. So what does this mean? In the near future, companies need to learn how to mitigate these generational differences once these millennials secure executive roles. So millennials are generally considered to be very confident very independent and autonomous, very innovative and high achievers by nature. So obviously, by default, this is really going to impact leadership in organizations. So think about it. If you're confident, that confidence as a leader is really going to instill to your followership or the people that you're trying to follow in your organization. If you're independent and very autonomous, that's going to cause uh, issues in your leadership style as well because you're used to doing things and not having to uh, get sign-offs or second guesses or rubber stamps on what you're trying to do. If you're innovative and you're in a leadership role, that means there's going to be a lot more creativity happening in your organization as well. And high achievers, we're going to be really, really focused on performance and getting things done within our organization. If you refer back to kind of the first slide, I was saying that, you know, organization redesigns are happening. If you look at organization redesigns in conjunction with this, you'll see the future is going to be a very different type of work. Um, we could be working from home a lot more. We could have very different hours. We could be working just on project basis, all different type of things. But if you've got a millennial leader looking after your area, you expect that things are going to be moving quite differently. So technological innovation as well is a millennial's natural world. So all of this can be expected to impact their leadership styles. So uh, just a quick quote from the Mercer Global Talent Trends from last year. CEOs are still perceiving leadership skills as the number one skill gap and are worried 
that leaders aren't ready to lead their organizations towards growth. So this is a huge topic in every organization at the moment. What are we doing to make sure there's succession of our key talent and we're really honing our leaders to, to uh, get better with an organization? So if you're tuning in from a leadership perspective for yourself, do know that's on the agenda of most organizations as well. So let's have a quick uh, checklist in terms of leadership skills that are needed now. Um, and there's no harm when you're looking at this to have a look in, in yourself and tick these off and see where you rate in terms of these. This is what you really need uh, to succeed at the moment uh, in a leadership role. So to be self-aware of your own personality. The amount of people that I talk with, either through executive coaching or through meetings and things like that, that aren't aware of their own personality, its strengths, its weaknesses, its blind spots, uh, are huge. If you are not aware of, of your strengths or weaknesses in terms of how you deal with people and how you might rub up people the wrong way or have a personality clash, it can seriously impact how you deal with people in business. It can impact anyone you're trying to lead in an organization, and it can certainly uh, impact your career prospects as well. So it's really important that we're aware of our own personality, and we can do this through personality assessments or personality tests or getting feedback um, from people within the organization but also to read other people's personality. So if you're not adapting your own personality when in a meeting with another person and you're not reading their body language or reading how they're reacting to you, you have a significant blind spot that's there. So if you're really trying to lead and be uh, you know, excellent in terms of what you're doing, there's significant blind spots around this. And communicating effectively. A lot of people think I've been communicating all my life. I've, I've been working for 20 years. Of course, I know how to communicate. But really, how are we communicating with different personalities? Um, you know, are we adapting accordingly to other people uh, when we're communicating? So there's so many different things around this that we tend not to look at. You know, are we reading people's body language? If we're in a board meeting, are we actually looking at the reactions of what people um, are, are, are doing when you're talking to them? And listening. Okay, Irish people as a, a cultural thing are very bad listeners. We're a heritage of storytellers. So we have to really focus on listening harder and better. But the amount of leaders that don't listen, the amount of people that leave organizations because their leaders don't listen is huge. So we need to start focusing and making a conscious effort to, to listen a lot more to our people and not just do that surface listening that most leaders do, but really listen to what these people are saying because you'll get much better at results in that case. So really focus on active listening. Influencing and persuading. This is a key skill that can really stop uh, leaders from progressing in organizations because every leader needs to be able to influence. We need to be able to persuade because if you've got a great idea and you're leading a department and you can't get that across in a meeting, it's definitely going to come back to bite you. So how we influence, how we persuade uh, in organizations is a key thing. Negotiation. We're negotiating every single day, no matter what we're doing. You could be having a one-to-one -one with your boss in an organization about getting a salary rise. That's a negotiation. You could be trying to get budget allocation for your department. That's a negotiation. But are we actually sitting down and doing a plan for our negotiation? Have we looked at our skills, how we're actually doing it? Do we do lessons learned from previous meetings that didn't go bad? How are we negotiating? And having presence. A lot of the time people think this is kind of an innate ability when you um, have presence, you either have it or you don't, but you can certainly build up uh, the ability to have presence and have charisma. And if you kind of stop and think of some of the best leaders that you've come across in your life, be it on, on TV or be it in person in your organizations, one of the first things people will say is, oh, they have a great presence. They can come into a room and command a room. You can learn how to do this. You're not born with that ability. You definitely can learn to have a presence better. And that will definitely serve leadership uh, skills a little bit better. And that goes hand in hand with having excellent presentation abilities. Now, when people say, um, oh, I've gone to a presentation skills course, I'm not talking about that. When people think presentation skills, they automatically think of somebody at the top of a room with a PowerPoint presentation and a clicker clicking on. That's not necessarily presentation skills. When I talk about presentation skills, I'm talking about presentation being in a meeting. So if you're sitting in a meeting and someone says to you, oh, Fiona, can you, uh, can you give me a rundown on what the latest challenges are in your department? And you have to think on the spot of what these are because you haven't prepared it. You're, present you're presenting. 
just because you don't have a PowerPoint, you're still presenting. So presentation skills means that ability to think on the spot, that ability to influence there and then. And there's going to be a lot more pressure on people to do this in a leadership capacity as we, we move on to a lot more changing and ambiguous type of situations. We're also looking a lot more at this team collaboration leadership style, which means you're going to be jumping into other areas in the business, trying to contribute ideas and presenting information. So that is a really key uh, leadership ability too. And to be emotionally intelligent. This term of emotional intelligence or EI has been going around for about 10 years, but it seems to be lost in certain people because they think, yeah, I'm pretty in touch with my emotions. But when you actually really diagnose what emotional intelligence is, a lot of the times people actually aren't. We all have emotional controls that we can literally flip on and off like a light switch on us if, we're, if we know what they are. So if you're in a meeting, if you're emotionally intelligent, you'll be able to control frustration. You'll be able to control anger. You won't blow hot and cold. You'll contain yourself and be reserved. That's what emotional intelligence is. It's about self-regulation. It's also about self-awareness. But it's also looking at other people and being able to read situations and emotions in a tough situation too. All hugely important for um, a leadership. And to be resilient, again, this, this term has been around for some time, but it's so important. And often people think, oh, I'm just not born resilient. It's not my personality. Resilience has nothing to do with personality. It's purely mindset and attitude. You cannot change your personality, but you can change your attitude and your mindset. Any good leader I know is highly resilient because when you think about it, the amount of things that happen on a leadership's desk every day, the amount of problems, the amount of issues, customers, employees, you need to be resilient. You need to have that thick skin. You can learn to be resilient. And a lot of the time when I'm coaching people, that's the one thing I really tend to focus on with them is, how can you be that little bit more resilient? Because it will definitely fast track your career if you're seen to be very, very um, uh, chilled when these kind of issues come up, which are much more prevalent at the moment. So take a look at that list. See where you sit on that list. I mean, you can't have all of these. You can't be excellent at everything. You're not superhuman. But there should be definitely some of these things that you say, right, I'm really, really good at this. But there should be some certain areas here that you go, okay, in order to be that better leader, I definitely need to focus on one or two or three of these areas. I like this quote too. Don't ever underestimate the impact you have on someone else's life as a leader. If you recall bad leaders or bad managers in your past in other work situations, you will always remember having a bad day when someone has spoken to you in a wrong manner. And you'll go home and you'll really feel this for weeks, sometimes days, and sometimes years. I know off the top of my head, I can certainly remember conversations over the years with bad leaders, and I will I'll probably never forget them. So you as a leader or an aspiring leader, never underestimate the impact you have on someone else's life because you are leading them in an organization. And that's something really important to remember when you look back at this list. Understanding their personality, understanding your own personality, listening to them, having influence with them, all those skills are so important when you are leading people. So let's focus on some top tips on what you can do now, even if you are not in a leader role or you are in a leader role, but you're looking to kind of, let's, let's do something different for the rest of 2018. And again, if you have questions, please feel free to put them through in the chat box and I'll try and cover uh, any questions that we have. So this first tip, which is a personal bugbear of mine, is we need to get over the soft skills stereotype. Again, I'll refer back to some of the conversations I've had recently with people who are struggling to get promoted. And one of the big issues they're having is that their companies aren't investing in soft skills for them, that they're only investing in technical skills or hard skills. And let's face it, uh, of course, technical skills are exceptionally important. We wouldn't be able to do our job without them. But what sits behind that technical skill is that people skill. Now, you might be very naturally good at people skills, but you might need some work. And again, it's something that you can focus on. And don't underestimate how important this is for your career, because that ability to negotiate, influence, have presence, will carry forward your technical skills to a more senior platform. So a lot of the time, people refer to these, again, as soft skills. But we need to get over that stereotype. And we really need to focus on how we can uh, build out, uh, you know, uh, in our own personal development plans, time for these soft skills. Even if you can't afford to go on a course, it's not necessarily that, but there's a lot of things we can do around this. 
The second thing is focusing on self-awareness. We don't have time to reflect. If you've had a really bad week at work, often some people just put it down to having a bad week, go home and drown themselves in a bottle of wine and get up the next day and go to work and are very negative. That's what a lot of people do. If you're having a bad week or have had a bad meeting or a bad interaction at work, you need to start focusing on why. Why has that happened? What did you do differently to react to that situation that you could do differently the next time? And the problem is we just don't have time. We're always rushing from one meeting to another and we never reflect. If we have time to reflect, we start really focusing on our self-awareness and we really start focusing on how we can do things better. What are our triggers or our weaknesses that are going to make us less efficient in work? So really focusing in on your self-awareness. You can do that quite easily. Just start keeping a track of things on a weekly basis in work. And if you feel that you've got frustrated in work or you've shown people that you've got frustrated, try and tack it back to what actually made you frustrated. So the next time this happens, you aren't uh, showing everybody your frustration, which again shows a weak uh, emotional intelligence. So focusing in on your own self-awareness. Taking control of your own leadership development. Again, people I talk to on a regular basis through coaching will often say, oh, you know, my boss doesn't support my leadership development or my organization doesn't support my leadership development. I often kind of put the question back to them and go, well, what are you doing about it? So if you're in a workplace and you feel a bit trapped at the moment that you're not feeling that you have that support, you need to start taking control of it yourself and really start driving your own leadership development and really start putting down what can you do differently that'll help you get to where you want to be next year. If you're not doing that, you're going to find yourself next year being in exactly the same spot as you are now. So what can you do now uh, that will help you drive and get, go towards those goals for next year? Seek out a mentor or coach. Some organizations uh, have really good formal mentoring and coaching programs there. If not, why don't you suggest it? So a mentoring can be a formal or informal capacity. If you don't have a formal program, start approaching people informally and saying, look, I really um, admire the role that you're doing in this organization. You've been here for a long time. Would you mind if I came to you with some uh, you know, uh, ideas or some informal mentoring? And often, right, more often than none, people are delighted to be asked to be a mentor. So don't let that put it off you. All they can say is no, isn't it worth trying? So seeking out a mentor, or a coach. And if your organization has coaches, great. If not, seek one out separately. And maybe it's worth paying them individually uh, outside of work to actually be your coach because they'll help you work on goals towards being that better leader, getting a better uh, you know, career advancement in terms of leadership. Without mentoring or coaching, we tend to sometimes uh, end up being in our own silo and we're not focusing on, on that kind of wider holistic way of being a better leader. So mentors and coaches can give us better ideas in terms of how we can really drive ourselves forward to be that better leader. Focusing on your own personal brand is exceptionally important too as a leader. So everybody has a personal brand in work. Whether you're there a very long time or quite new, you will have a legacy or a personal brand. And really what that says is, what do you want to be known for in your organization? If you were to leave in the morning, what's the legacy you're leaving behind? If somebody has a problem in work, they might say, oh, call Fiona, she's great at this or great at that. What is your personal brand? And often this is down to values. And I often ask people to perhaps write down three things that you want to be known for and three things that you don't want to be known for in your organization. And that little exercise itself will help you figure out what your personal brand is to be. And sometimes your personal brand is something as simple as to be a very helpful colleague, okay? To be um, a very professional colleague or to be a helper to other people in the organization. So what is your personal brand and really own and live that to help drive that leadership style? Becoming more of a team player. I mentioned at the start of the webinar that there's going to be a hell of a lot more focus on being more collaborative and being much more of a team player at that top level. So what are we doing now that's making us be that little bit more of a team leader? Because that becomes very visible to organizations as well. And it's really, really important. And listen more. Again, it's one of my bugbears here. We need to open our ears and uh, stop talking sometimes and really listen to what's going on around us in an organization, to the individuals we're leading, and, and really focus on what's being said. Because when we're not listening, we're cutting off so many different ideas and thoughts. And the real uh, benchmark that you're testing yourself if you're listening is if 
you are already pre-planning what you're going to say when the person is still talking, you're not listening. So if somebody is talking to you right now, maybe not right now, but if someone's talking to you and you're in your head saying, okay, when this person stops talking, I'm going to come in with this idea, you are not listening to them. So challenge yourself the next time someone's talking and you feel you're not listening to them. Never stop trying to be a better leader. If you're a leader a long time, you can always get better. And this is the beauty about learning about yourself. You're never, ever, ever stop learning. There's always things you can learn about personality, about yourself, about other people. So never stop uh, trying to be a better leader. There's always different ways you can be better. So I'm going to um, end the webinar on this slide because I think uh, this is a really good uh, picture. Your comfort zone and where the magic actually happens. If you are striving to be a better leader this year or next year, where the magic happens is where it's at. How do you get to where the magic happens? It's by looking at some of the tips that I shared with you. It's by really focusing on pushing your boundaries, pushing yourself towards different goals, being a better version of yourself, and really getting forward to do something different that you've never done before. So I'd like to thank you for your attention on the webinar. Uh, if you're interested in learning more, we actually have a new certificate in leadership skills starting next month, uh, which is four days. Um, and They're not consecutive days. It's one day a month for April, May, June, and July that we're going to look at focusing in on a lot of the leadership skills that we looked at today. So thank you for your attention and happy Easter. And uh, hopefully see some of you soon. Bye-bye.